SpraySmarter.com. Today, Chris is going to show us a couple different ways on how to add a boom to your 25 gallon spray wand. Um, we get a lot of calls on this weekly, and we just thought we would show you guys a couple different options and what Chris and all of us here prefer as far as cheapest, easiest way to go. All right, Chris, what are you going to show us today? Well, today we're going to show you how to build a boom sprayer off of your little 12 volt wand sprayer that you may have, a 25 or 15 gallon spray tank that you might use around the property that you want to turn into a boom sprayer and a wand sprayer. And it's pretty simple. We get lots of calls for this. Um, I've, we've thought about making kits for this, but there's so many options as far as hose size, boom size, things like that, that it's, it's pretty much custom for every customer. So we're just going to start out with a little generic layout. This is probably the most common. We get three to five sections. Usually people want to set up a, let's say a, a boom this wide on the back of their lawnmower, on the back of a trailer. They're, they're basically making this part of it and we're selling the parts that, that get it uh, to spray. So this is what I consider a dry boom setup. Um, so the first thing you wanna do is you're gonna select what size boom material you're gonna be, whether it's square tubing or round. T-Jet makes these very clamps. Um, there are several different sizes and they're, they, like I said, they're square tubing and round tubing. This is actually one inch pipe. So that's what we're gonna demonstrate on today. So what we consider a dry boom setup is a clamp that clamps to a solid piece of pipe as its structure. So that is considered a dry boom. As you can see, these have a little square uh, cutout in them. And those are what um, these slide into. So there's a little square on the, on the nozzle body. Those would slide in there. This slides in above it. And you just simply screw the screw down till it's tight against the, the steel boom. And that is your structure for your, for your nozzle body. Um, so what I do is I go based on your size of hose. Today we're gonna use 3 8 all of these part numbers are 3 8 inch hose that have the hose barbs on them. And this pump is, has a 3 8 hose, 3 8 inch hose on it. So the way to set them up is you got to have a way to feed it. This is the way I like to do it. This is the simplest, most inexpensive way to build one. So you got one nozzle body here in the middle that's going to feed the boom. I'm coming off my pump and I'm going to stick my pump hose on there and that's going to feed that pipe. It's going to feed my boom. So my setup here, I'm just going to do a quick three nozzle setup, which is about the simplest setup you can get. Um, and as far as nozzle spacing, you can do 15 or 20 is what I usually recommend. Depending on um, how far off the ground you're going to be spraying. These nozzles that we're using today like to be about 20 to 30 inches off the, the contact area. So if you're spraying your grass, you want your boom to be set about 20 inches off the grass or weeds or whatever your contact is. So we would use two of these and one of the crosses, which is that part number there. And I'll link all the part numbers on our website in the description when I... So, let's just slap this on here real quick. So, 
So there you have a three nozzle body set up on a tube structure considered a dry boom. So all you're gonna do is cut your pieces of hose here, your 3 8 hose, attach those. And then from there, you're gonna run your hose to your pump, which we just simulated the pump here. We do sell the pumps to here. So that's what you turn it on and it's gonna spray. I recommend putting a T in here because you'll probably still want to use your spray wand. So if you want, you could do it a couple different ways. I prefer this method here where I thread a banjo micro valve, which is LV038 MTV into a T. And I'm going to spread, thread another hose barb in here, a hose barb in here and a hose barb in here. So I'm basically coming off this pump like that. This is gonna feed this, so we have a valve to shut that off. The hose coming out here is gonna feed your wand. So your wand valve is built into it, of course, so as long as you're not squeezing it, you're good, it's turned off. And then when you wanna spray out your boom, you just turn that on. You can reach around and turn it on however you got it set up. But this is what I prefer to do when I'm telling somebody how to set something up. So like I said, you're feeding your spray wand and you're feeding your boom and then you got a little micro on off valve, which is pretty handy. And then on your nozzle selection, um, that's something that's usually custom as well, depending on how many gallons per acre or per square foot you're doing. Typically, I use the yellow nozzles when I set one up. That's like a slow moving five, three, four mile an hour nozzle. So it's good for, a, it's an XR 11002. So it's good for, you know, you can be 20 inches off the ground. So we're gonna have a, another video here soon about discussing what the different nozzles are. So we'll, we'll have that later. But for now, I'm just going to recommend the yellow. So an XR11002, which is a 0.2 gallon per minute, which is about a 10 to 12, 15 gallon an acre nozzle if you're running three to five miles an hour, which is generally what you're spraying in your yard or doing two, uh, 24D or Roundup. So in here, I like to put a check valve. The guy I talked to the other day didn't realize what I meant. And we have tip strainers, 50 mesh tip strainers with a built-in check valve in them. So what that does is when you turn your pump off and you shut that valve off, when you get below five PSI, that is going to stop this nozzle body from dripping. So you're not dripping all over the yard or if you're spraying Roundup on your driveway and you wanna drive back through your yard, you're not killing little strips. So what that does is when this pump gets down, when the pressure in this line gets below five PSI, it's gonna stop it from dripping. So you wanna insert that. Plus you're also getting a strainer built in, a 50 mesh strainer so you don't plug your nozzle. So we'll take our tip, put it in our cap. There's the cap number. These are kind of hard to get in there, but. And then that's gonna attach right here. And that's gonna give you a nice pattern for, uh, like I said, 10 to 15 gallon per acre, depending on how fast you wanna drive. So that would be my first option and we'll, we'll come back with option two. All right, we're back with the second part of this video. Um, so again, we talked about at the beginning, there's several options. We're just gonna cover a few actually two options, but some other things that you could put in there, depending on what you want to build, how much money you want to spend. So I personally prefer the nozzle bodies with the built-in check valves. These are a better quality check valve than what we had in this guy here. Um, so this little cap comes off. There's a diaphragm in there that shuts it off and there's a spring loaded check valve. These last a long time, a lot longer than those and like, they're, they're more money, of course. They're a little more expensive than the nozzle bodies we used earlier with no check valves. They still have the same T-jet pattern lug. 
for your cap and the square for the uniclamp or the very clamp sorry so we're going to do it this way this time so we're going to set up a check with a three nozzle body set up now again depending on how long you want to make your boom you can put in more t's we'll slap the t in here your middle nozzle body and then we'll put another 90 at the end maybe it's hard to do on the back side so you can all see it there we go So this is a three nozzle setup. <clears throat> As you can tell, there's no cross in here anymore to feed it. So that is no longer a part. They don't make a part with the three hose shape with the checks. So I recommend just throwing a hose barb T, HBT 038 in there. Hose, 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 and then hose all the way across there. Um, we talked about the valve earlier. You could still use it that way. You can also put in a valve if you just wanted to cut your line and not thread in any fittings just have a cut this is the same style valve we used earlier but with two three eighths hose barbs and these are good little valves from banjo we sell quite a few of those i don't remember what that, that was that one so um here, these look just like the first ones we picked up earlier, but as you can tell, there is no check valve. So we're gonna put the 8079 PP50s into here as your tip strainer. And the same thing with the same nozzle. Cap goes on, and now you're set up with XR11002. So again, 10 to 15 gallon per acre, three to five mile an hour is about where you're gonna be with that nozzle. Um, another option that I prefer is to put an inline strainer in, a small banjo micro strainer, LSTM 050 50, 50 mesh. This nozzle needs a 50 mesh to catch it. So, whatever passes through here will pass through that nozzle. So, this is just an added option if you wanted to add it. It just makes for less problems with your tip strainers. So you can tell cleaning this one out and cleaning this one out, which one are you going to do more often? This is why I prefer these. You don't have to clean them out as often as the tip strainers. So that pretty much concludes our lesson for today. 